So, Lesson 24 starts to talk about how the barter networks started taking people's time as collateral in Argentina, and huge barter networks arose, which eventually saved the country. You can Google for Let's Currency in Argentina, New York Times, and this was May 6, 2001. To weather recession, Argentines revert to barter by Clifford Krauss. Picture captions Horatio Powell of the New York for the New York Times. Maria Rodland left, who lost her job as a secretary with some of her knitting and crochet work at a barter fair. People are at a barter club in Bernal at changing money for scrip, which they then use for goods and services available through the club. Scrip is poker chip. Their own community poker chips. Buenos Aires, May 5th. By the standards of most Latin American countries, Pedro Pires hardly looks like a charity case. He wears a handsome sports watch and a thick gold wedding ring. His hair's neatly parted. He has all his teeth, and his meticulous handwriting is a product of a decent public school education. But Mr. Perez is just scraping by, struggling like many other Argentines to hold on to a middle-class life three years deep into a recession. At 43, he cannot count on a regular salary from his sales job at a shoe factory anymore, so he's been forced to sell his townhouse and Ford sedan, and his wife has gone back to work. And every Friday night, Mr. Perez carries bags of shoes, sneakers, and shoe polish his factory gives him, when it is too short of cash to meet its payroll, to one of the many barter clubs that have sprouted up in this city where he exchanges his wares indirectly for fruits, vegetables, and handmade clothes. Bartering, that pre-capitalist form of commerce popular in Indian villages in, uh, in Indian villages in Latin America, even long after the Spanish conquest, is making a far-reaching comeback in Argentina as an improbable safety net for a forlorn middle class not accustomed to the hardships that are a way of life elsewhere in the region. The Trekkie Clubs, the word means exchange or barter in Spanish, emerged in 1995 the brainchild of three young professionals looking for a way to help lower-middle-class Buenos Aires suburb of Bernal overcome the brief recession that followed the Mexican currency crisis, whose effects had rippled throughout Latin America. That first barter club started with just 30 members. Today, as Argentina muddles through a recession with no end in sight, more than 450 clubs have been founded in 20 of the country's 24 provinces. They are nurtured first by word of mouth, then by ample news coverage, and by the internet, which is used to advertise their locations and schedules. An estimated half a million Argentines now barter regularly. Now, within a year, it's going to be 7 million. After the bank shut their doors, people had no other money except barter money, so they had 7 million members within a year. And up to 1 million, or almost 5% of the economically active population, do so occasionally, according to sociologists who've studied the trend. About 10,000 people shopped at a May Day Trueque Mega Fair this week in Buenos Aires suburb. At the clubs, people set up tables and stalls to peddle goods or the promise of services in exchange for scrip barter money known as creditos, credits. They can then use this to obtain other goods and services through the clubs, which have established an informal network. The goods range from food and produce to clothing and homemade skin care products. The services include everything from dental work and plumbing to psychological counseling and tarot card readings, often proffered by underemployed or unemployed professionals. The traders set their prices by supply and demand, making the barter clubs a combination of competition and neighborly solidarity. Today, the clubs have more than 7 million worth of script in circulation, barcoded to guard against counterfeiting. An estimated 400 million in goods and services were traded last year. Organizers say they expect an 80% increase in the value of transactions this year because of the deepening recession. Well, it wasn't just 80%. They went from a half a million members to 7 million members, so that was pretty big more. The recession has been brought on and sustained by plunging commodity prices, rising interest rates, mounting public debt, and an overvalued currency that depressed exports. The new economy minister, Domingo Cavallo, says the economy should improve later this year, but independent economists say the slide is continuing. Should the government default on its debts, the recession could easily deepen and increase the prospects of a currency devaluation, which could cause still more companies with heavy dollar debts to fold. 
This is not a living, but it keeps me and my family above water, said Mr. Perez, the shoe family salesman. Okay, an anti-poverty lifeboat, and he's riding in it instead of no boat at all. Ever since Brazil devalued two years ago, my factory's not been able to compete. They pay us in shoes to keep the business from collapsing until the economy picks up again, if it ever does. Now, the thing is, if you're an employee and you're going to get laid off, ask your boss if he'll pay you in bonds that you can spend for the company product. Small denomination bonds from your company are just as good as shoes. The Trekkie Clubs have become a vital stitch in the social fabric of scores of towns and neighborhoods. People who might be moping at home, depressed by the near 15% unemployment rate and daily speculation of a government default of currency or currency devaluation, have instead revved up at-home production of knitted sweaters, mate tea gourds, and oven-baked pizzas to trade. It's an incubator for new businesses, said Carlo Alberto Fazio, an economy ministry official who's studying ways to support the clubs. The people have chosen the clubs first to survive, then to reintegrate into the formal economy. The Trekking Clubs expanded in popularity without government support. But as it continues struggling to find a way out of the economic malaise, the government has itself recognized the value of the clubs as a safety valve that provides not only economic benefits, but also a social and psychological boost for people who can take problems into their own hands in a communal setting. The trend is beginning to spread to neighboring Bolivia, Paraguay, Chile, and even Spain. In Argentina, word has gotten around that down-and-out singles are finding mates at the clubs to share their problems, making barter clubs an increasingly popular weekend hangout for the young. In the last few months, Argentine public officials themselves have begun to use the barter system to improve local economies and serve their own needs. Five impoverished municipalities have decided to accept services from barter club members to fix leaking roofs or street lights in lieu of taxes. Well, why not just pay them with tax credit bonds? Bam. So, I mean, they'll take your credits, you take their credits. The economy ministry has begun a program to teach basic marketing and bookkeeping skills to a thousand Trekkie traders who have begun producing their own detergents, candles, breads, and graphic designs. It's also preparing to start a program with a national doorman's union in which the government will pay union members to teach barter club members basic electrical and plumbing skills. On Friday night, the Trekkie club where Mr. Perez and others go in the Floresta neighborhood looks and feels more like an indoor flea market than a place where the down and out eat out in existence. Women giggle to each other as they have their hair done by underemployed coiffers, and the men sip their mint tea, talk soccer while waiting for customers. We use the Tureki as a kind of therapy, says Serenus Ramos, a 46-year-old housewife who brought a bag of toys to trade. It's a chance to leave the house, make friends, and supplement the family income. Marma Rolden, 35, lost her job as a secretary in a law firm three months ago and spends three days a week looking for work. The rest of the time, she knits and crochets sweaters and baby booties to trade at the Trekkie Clubs. Business has become so brisk, she said she's thinking of opening her own business rather than find another job. Bad luck has turned into an opportunity, and I'm developing my creativity, she said. Osaldo Gonzalez, 71, was a photographer for President Juan Domingo Persia in the 1950s, but has not worked for the last five years and has heart disease. He started trading photographic portraits at tricky clubs two years ago, and there was little customer interest. Over the last year, however, he's found a new way to supplement his pension. He goes from neighborhood to neighborhood buying kitchen utensils from failing stores and trades them at tricky clubs. With all this, I get the food I need. This is a perfect way... To, for people to get through the crisis, and it's perfect for the government to keep the social lid on. Copyright New York Times, 2001. And it's titled, Reshuffling for a New Social Order, the Experience of Global Barter Network in Argentina, in September 1998. Anyway, they mention in it that the rise of the global barter network in Argentina must be understood as a response from civil society's grassroots in the context of the highest rate of unemployment within a new economic world order and the consequences in the national economy and politics. This accounts for the creation of the first barter club, which started May 1st, 1995, with a group of 20 neighbors and turned in three years to more than 150 clubs all over the country, involving 80,000 to 100,000 people in global barter transactions of food, clothes, artisanship, craft, healthcare, therapies, tourism, formal and informal education, and training in many different fields. So, one interesting thing was at the same time, political leaders 
in Argentina started changing strategies to get taxes paid by citizens, some start bartering with them, allowing the introduction of critical products and services that are utilized instead of money to pay taxes. Eggs, photocopies, and mechanical service are being accepted in some villages. So I added, and of course, if you add to this a new provincial currency, the Patacons, issued by the province of Buenos Aires as a government version of Let's, then both systems could complement each other. RGT, the global truck network, should accept Patacons and not the federal stuff. And the Buenos Aires province should accept creditos in payments of some taxes. Both would then complement and strengthen each other. Go Argentina, go. Who cares if the stock market crashes and the rich lose their money? Poorer Argentinians, question mark, have their own money now.